now our third presentation is from Superpool from Serva, uh, Selva Gerdegan and uh, Gregor's Tank. Um, Selva, oh. Selva is an architect, uh, a Turkish architect who graduated from SciArc in the US, and uh, Gregor's is uh, a Danish architect who graduated from uh, Ara School of Architecture in Denmark, and uh, they're going to talk to us about their work in Istanbul. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a humbling effort, actually, to uh, to present as the last uh, group today. It's uh, been a wonderful series of discussions, and uh, uh, especially to follow up on a, a sort of the public uh, side of the discussion to to see such an inspiring projects uh, from New York. Uh, we come from a territory which is more similar to Cairo in, in some ways, in the lack of the local uh, administration to have creative capacity. So, uh, so to, to make up for that, um, small architecture offices like ourselves kind of have to step up and uh, create ideas uh, to, to fill that void. Uh, we'll sh show Two, two lines of work. One is about transportation, and uh, we have been uh, so. And then the other one will be more about the uh, zoning rules and the um, sort of the informal housing projects that are be becoming formalized now. So, uh, sorry, this is Istanbul, uh, and as in uh, as here in in Cairo, there is a large part of the city that is, let's say, the, there is the five percent and the 95 percent of the city where. The, the average citizen live, uh, which is what you see to your, to your left-hand side. Uh, how do we navigate in that, and how do we get around? Uh, that happens with these... Uh, oh, you. Uh, only one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. Uh, this is how the system works. Uh, so we have, as you have here in, in Cairo, these uh, shared modes of transport called the domus and minibuses. I think what is interesting about the Dolmish minibuses uh, in Istanbul, at least, is that uh, it's a mode of transportation from the 70s, and it's, uh, in a way, it's outdated. Now the city doesn't really consider it as a part of its system, really. Though in, 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 a, in actual service, uh, the Dolmish minibus take up a lot of load, uh, but they're not a part of the smart ticket system. The city is always pushing them out. The idea is always to build a bigger, uh, sort of the more concrete infrastructures, like the metro and the uh, light rail. Uh, but for us, uh, Istanbul and, and these sort of B plans, because we won't call them informal anymore, because in Istanbul these things are not informal anymore. They're all formalized uh, in, in some manner. Uh, but we call them sort of B plans, because they, are, they, are, they came to existence in lack of the, uh, the city being able to cater, these, uh, cater to the, these needs. Um, so it has always been somewhat interesting for us to, to, to deal with them. And uh, one of our first projects in Istanbul was to do this Dolmuş minibus map. And uh, it was meant for sale and, uh, as a, in a souvenir shop. It was sort of a joke in itself because the people who would buy it from a souvenir shop wouldn't really know how to, you know, they, they wouldn't use the minibus. And at the same time, people who would use the minibus don't actually wouldn't know how to read the map. So it, it was in itself a joke, but uh, also an important sort of statement to make um, to, to the city that these layers need to be documented. Maybe we can talk about the documentation system. Yeah, so uh, as we also discovered to, uh, uh, through the talks today, uh, data is power. So though the, the transport authorities of Istanbul have a map on the wall in their offices of all the lines of the Domus maps, uh, Domus lines, they are not uh, giving it out, and when we asked them why not, we, we, they said, well, we tried to make a legible map, but we couldn't, uh, so end of story, and that's where we came into the picture. Uh, so we, how, we collected the data, how we collected the data was uh, extremely manual. We, uh, we were three, four, five people, I think, and then we just took the buses and just charted them, and so that, that was the method. Uh, but why we are interested in the Dolmuş, I think it's uh, the, these flexible modes of transportation in cities like Istanbul or Cairo are quite interesting because of their shared quality. Uh, they, uh, like the, there's contemporary versions of them, uh, like in the US, uh, like the Zipcar, uh, for example, is, or, the, or all kinds of carpooling. Uh, software that now are available on smartphones. So in a sense, the, the Dolmuş is an archetype of car sharing. And car sharing is a very efficient idea. According to Zipcar, again, it takes out about 20 cars off the uh, traffic. So, you know, it's, a, it's quite a gain uh, 
what you achieve with these uh, shared systems. And we, uh, looking at the overall uh, system of mo mobility, Istanbul it has, of course, all the, the components uh, from motorway rail to sea. But, but more interestingly, they actually are split into uh, groups like private and public, uh, which means that you can, as a citizen, to actually take part in the, in the transport system. Right? On the private side, each of these domices are individually owned. So if, again, we were to upgrade the language of that, we could say this is actually crowdfunding a whole in, uh, sort of bus fleet. So in that sense, to, to look at these systems or the B plans from 70s and to kind of bring them up to today's contemporary language is sort of an interesting uh, brain exercise. But this uh, Dolmuş Minibus map led us to a much more serious project called Mapping Istanbul, which we will talk to you about on Sunday in more detail. Uh, but it was a sort of a publication that took two years of effort to put together uh, with a lot of maps of the city. Um, and so sort of mapping has been an ongoing project in, in the office. So we, because because still the data is not always accessible and the things that are so easy to visualize in a way, like one of the maps in Mapping Istanbul is the location of all the Starbucks and we have about 110 Starbucks in Istanbul now. So that's, uh, you know, just, just to see where are those. And it's a very simple question, very simple answer, but someone needs to put it together. Uh, similarly, we have done for the, uh, now we have architectural biennial in Istanbul. It, uh, actually, I would like to announce this because uh, it's a great platform for collaboration. It usually works with an open call. So every two years, uh, now the next one will be in 2014, uh, there's a design biennial and hopefully we can develop projects together on that. But uh, for, for that, our intention was to look at what is the design demographics of Turkey. So how many, how many architecture students are there? How many architectural professionals are there? Urban planners, um, landscape designers, and so forth. So this was another series of mappings that we did. We also tried to, to carry out this information to the larger public, not only to, let's say, our own um, profession. So we distribute some of these map into, uh, maps into uh, uh, newspapers. So here is again the, the, the design demographics of, of Turkey, or it could be how you access uh, the, the parks of Istanbul by public transport. Yeah, and these go into a comics magazine uh, every month, so we produce one for a, sort of a youth magazine. Um, now we will talk about another project, uh, Mobility 2030 Istanbul. Uh, I have to explain the context of this because in a way it's like it's a quite funny uh, context. It's, it's a very it's a light context compared to all the issues that we've been talking about all day. You have a car company who comes to you and says, you know, I want you to think about the future of your city uh, in a way and put some cars in it in a way, you know, like to figure out what the mobility is in the future. <laughs> and so, so, so bear that in mind when, when we're presenting this because it, 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 has, it deals with a serious problem but it, it comes in a sort of strange context um, of uh, of the competition of Audi uh, tw uh, 2012, which was a great, great fun to work in, and we were actually working together with Urban Think Tank, uh, who presented earlier as well. But what we proposed to them was to look at the um, the future tra transport systems as a the loyalty sp uh, program, but uh, a loyalty program that did not give miles back for miles, but uh, somehow it promoted shared mobility, and in return it gave you more city. So this was the short story of the project. So if you didn't take your car but choose to drive a Dolmuş, you would earn points. Uh, it was sort of a game. And with the points you earn, you would get uh, sort of a rental money to sort of kind of occupation money for uh, street space. So it, this was a simple idea. And uh, it touched on things that were both important for Audi, so mo mobility, traffic, future, technology, and things that were important for us, like community building, uh, participation, and democracy. Istanbul over the summer, I mean, right now the Turkish context is an interesting context too. Uh, we are at the end of a, hopefully, at the end of a 30-year internal war, and uh, again, trying to reformalize a constitution. This is the eighth time we're rewriting it. So in a way, there's a lot of social infrastructure that is being renegotiated. 
so we had this sort of grand statement, uh, the future of democracy is in the streets uh, where cars have freed up space for park. Park being this future online platform that we thought was such a great idea. Yeah. So again, uh, returning to Istanbul, this is Istanbul when it uh, takes out uh, at its best. Uh, when you come as a tourist to Istanbul, uh, this is Istanbul for, for its uh, normal uh, inhabitants. And uh, of course, out here asking what are the problems of mobility in Istanbul when we look at, at the sort of the ring roads of the city, uh, we see a lot of congestion uh, throughout the day. Uh, but really, it's not the major problem of the city. Uh, so when we look into the neighborhoods, uh, this is the problem, that cars have uh, taken over all the priority of, let's say, all the street space. And this is a normal day in our neighborhood where our office is, and uh, that's our friend Mehmet and that's our baby Malik, but uh, so th there's nothing really staged about that um, shot, except uh, Mehmet could be driving the stroller on the road instead of the sidewalk, but he's sort of, to make it insisting. <laughs> Um, so when Audi asked us what is the future of mobility in Istanbul, it was quite easy to say, you know, the future is also in the past, let's take a look at the shared mobility systems. And again, as we discussed earlier with the Dolmuş minibus map, the, uh, the shared taxis and the shared uh, minibuses are a great asset. Uh, they talk on several levels. Uh, but what they also do is they take out a lot of cars off the traffic. So we, our point was, you know, imagine the, a future version of the Dolmuş minibus, uh, maybe a much more smarter version, which you can call the Dolmuş wherever you want on your mobile device. You get picked up, you get dropped off where you want, and it kind of synchronizes everyone else who is on the same route as you. And you create this miracle of a city which has less, 20 times less cars. And that in Istanbul would be just, an, it would just make, turn it into an amazing city. And then, of course, we would also free up space in the streets, uh, streets in every city, and especially in these big cities like Istanbul, Cairo, are, th are the most important public space. This is where we are always all together. This is where we celebrate, where we go on strike, where we kind of take a break. Sometimes it's home, sometimes it's play. But this is one of the best locations in, the, the, in downtown Istanbul, and it's a car park. You know, so that's it. all of this is uh, kind of consistently among cars. And again, for a healthy society, this is, uh, you can sort of read it from its streets, if, if you, in, in our opinion at least, that if, if you can coexist, then your streets are happy and together. And we are not the only ones who say this, so that's, uh, of course, also democratic streets have been uh, formalized a lot, in the, also in the 70s, by urbanists in New York. And uh, one of their points was that it, it is important for the people to feel that they own and that they can change the streets, they can appropriate them, they can occupy them. So that street as a neutral space is a wrong concept, that it's a street is actually somehow occupied space, but it's always temporarily occupied. <coughs> so in our idea of, of, of this platform, which actually somehow uh, managed also the public space in a fun way, so you could have, um, you could sort of come out um, this was Meta Amja coming out with his uh, backgammon game for the, for the afternoon. And then the project had another component with the city squares. Um, again, over the summer in Istanbul, it was a long discussion about Taksim Square. And it's, again, one of the sort of state representation spaces here. Uh, you see the opera house in the back. It was one of the modernization projects to uh, open up the big um, boulevards and the green park and also build the opera house. And ever since it's been under discussion if should we keep the opera house, should we tear it down, should we build a mosque on that space, should we, uh, what should we do with the park. And now the final point the project came to was to rebuild the um, old Ottoman army barracks on instead of the park uh, back up. But there is no reason of course to have army barracks all anymore in the city center. So it has a vague cultural program, but in essence, it's going to be a shopping mall. So, but, but there is no, we couldn't over the summer, actually, uh, it's, it's been a fight for two, almost two years now. Um, 
somehow the critical mass never comes together in the city to, to save that park. It all sort of, and now it's under construction. But uh, that was also one of our spaces to, uh, to show that it could be kind of temporarily occupied all the time. It didn't need to be, have one name on it. Uh, and this was the healthier way to do it. Okay, so again, this issue of the uh, eighth constitution since uh, 1839. Every 20 years, we rewrite the constitution in Turkey. So we we're very good at it, or very bad at it, <laughs> whichever way we want to look. Uh, so, uh, and again, uh, in the constitution, only one language is uh, formally uh, official. Uh, there's 28 spoken languages, and they're all all languages. They're not English or Danish, uh, but they're not. Re legally rec recognized, so will we finally make something that accepts everyone uh, is the issue. Yeah. So, of course, uh, one of the things you always hear about uh, Istanbul is that it has a very young population, is driving the, the growth of the uh, economy, etc. And, and at the same time, it's also the second largest Facebook city in the world, uh, only after Jakarta. Uh, so there is a lot of, let's say, online presence and uh, participation in this kind of uh, other networks. Now we'll show you a short movie about the platform we were proposing. It works like this. You gain points every time you choose to travel by intelligent domush. With the points you collect, you get to rent space and organize events. Now let's take a look at how Elif is using Park. Elif wakes up and starts planning her day in Park. Elif looks at the many things happening in Beyoğlu today. She likes to live in Beyoğlu because there are many neighborhood events along with interesting institutional programs. Here is an invitation posted by Leila and Mehmet. Seems like their son Malik has learned how to ride a bike. Elif loves little Malik and would be happy to celebrate his achievement this evening. The event needs one more supporter for it to happen. She gladly accepts. The celebration will be on their street tonight. What else is happening in her neighborhood? Elif wants to run tomorrow morning at Gessy Park. So she goes to her neighborhood groups and rides to the morning runners. Seems like Lucas is up for a morning run. Elif also likes to cook in the communal kitchen. She will throw a feast next Friday. Many different communities organize events on park. Elif is an architect and checks today's professional events in her city. Is there something that fits her schedule? These are all the architectural events located on the map. She can see when and where each event takes place. This urbanism workshop looks interesting. Let's see how it can be incorporated in her route today. Here is a list of all her appointments. She can easily go to the workshop before her doctor's appointment. Park places all her scheduled events on the map and suggests an efficient mode of transportation to get from place to place. The planner suggests the most efficient routes, taking into consideration the weather, traffic, and events on the streets. One of her colleagues, Hande, is also going to the same event. Great, Elif and Hande can share a dolmush and earn points. Elif usually prefers to take the mode of transportation that gets her the most points, even if it means walking a little. On her profile, Elif shares all the pictures taken at the events she has hosted. She can also keep track of how she is gaining and sharing her points. By mostly taking shared transportation, Elif has collected a lot of points and helped organize many community events. 
She especially likes engaging youngsters to help them learn fun things and make sure everybody cleans up after. She has gotten such good feedback that she is now on the run to becoming a neighborhood leader. Support Alif by attending one of her Robots for Kids workshops. And remember, with Park, you too can make a difference in your community. Oops. Um, so that was kind of the vision for Audi's uh, urban future. But uh, let's uh, give you a quick update on Cal uh, yeah, uh, we'll do give you a quick out update on uh, the urban issues uh, from a building point of view. Um, we are a part of a col collaboration among a lot of young uh, offices uh, organized by an uh, agency called Urban Strategy to look at neighborhoods at a time and sort of think through their uh, changing, uh, uh, the change. Uh, one of the pr uh, project areas is to look at Kaatane, which is just behind the CBD. Uh, Kaatane started off as a Gecekonda area, which is kind of the, uh, the word for slums in Turkish. Uh, but there is actually no more Gecekonda left in Istanbul. All of it has become this post Gecekonda apartment buildings. And, and the process was um, informal, but at the same time formalized through the pop uh, the local governments granting legalization rights, thereby winning uh, elections, thereby giving even more proper uh, building rights and winning the next elections. So sort of this sort of uh, strange and sick relationship between the, um, the, the voting and, the, and actually the ruling. Um, the CBD and the, uh, the post Gecekondo neighborhoods have the same FAR, they have the same density, so it's one is very tall, the other is low and very super dense, uh, but they're both kind of uh, don't really have any good street layouts and whatnot around them. Uh, but there is a danger right now, uh, so all the, because Istanbul is an earthquake risk zone, uh, the government is declaring areas as uh, rebuilding areas, uh, urban renewal areas, uh, some for good reasons, some for doubtable reasons, and, uh, but uh, what they have placed as a rule is that to uh, make up more green space, uh, they are asking people to uh, take a urban tissue which has 80% footprint and collect it into 30 or 40% footprints and go tall. So the result typically would look like this if you follow all the rules, this is what you would get. So from a very dense urban uh, street pattern, you would get uh, into a no man's land. So the, this, uh, but this, the city doesn't really recognize this uh, yet. And of course, there can be better versions of these uh, designed by better architects, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, better architects mean better investments, means better money. So when you end up with uh, projects which, uh, or areas which no investor is really interested in, you mean you, it means you will get the, you know, not so good architects, not so good investments, and not so good results. So part of the projects that we are working on is to look at the models and to see what kind of uh, built ratios, what kind of massing ratios make sense. And uh, we have prepared this uh, design guideline for the municipality. Uh, we don't really know, like this is really uh, right now happening in Istanbul is there is young firms who have these sort of interface agencies who are uh, initiating these research projects almost uh, sort of voluntary efforts or with very minimum pay to to get uh, what is missing in the local municipalities this kind of creative process and um, let's I will report back on that in a couple of years mm -hmm. thank you